So how do you take that forward into your future design then? Right? As the generations move outside these windows, they are more and more glued to you know, the plasma screen of their television or you know, their cell phone or their Blackberry. They're more screen oriented than mm -hmm. acoustically in sort of conventional Absolutely. presentation. So what do you, how do you deal with that as a modern designer dealing in a modern world? Well, the, the only place I would have to deal with it specifically would be in costuming, where they have, they have to wear those bloody backpack things, the batteries, or God knows whatever <laughs> it is on their back, and find a place for the microphone to come down here, you know, and f so you can hear. I hate those things, especially on, on really beautifully cut clothes and what have you. You've got a bulge, you know, or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm talking about there. But in terms of... But I, mean, but I normally, I don't, uh, I don't like it if... If, first of all, if the mouse mics are on the floor, you know, getting, getting in the way of the overall look, you've got these hunkin things sitting there. I don't, I'm not particularly thrilled about it. But I understand why it's there, Robert, because I don't think people are trained like they used to be. People are, are, this, are can't, I mean, opera singers don't need them, but they can sing. But we have to fill the audience with 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 uh, with uh, uh, noise in a sense, with with loud amplification of sound, et cetera, et cetera, which is what I think you're talking about. In these new these new musicals, et cetera, it's all amplified. But but with the and um, okay, fine. That maybe that's part of the genre of the musical now that we have to deal with that and I'll accept it. But I don't accept it when they start to want to amplify drama. Because that, to me, is an insult to the actors. That they, if they have to be amplified to be heard, then they a they haven't done they haven't been trained properly. They don't know how to project or whatever the case may be. It's 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 in the training, and that's why I don't like amplification. We did a show at, at Theater Aquarius where the artistic director at that time said, you know, we 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 sort of amplify the actors and said and Christopher said not in my show but you in terms need to do it also in yeah. terms of design though there there are designers now with a whole technical shopping basket full of you know television screens uh, cameras on stage uh, mm -hmm. you know plasma screens I mean mm -hmm. digital recreations mm -hmm. uh, do you feel any uh, obligation to use those modern tools in designs not necessarily no not at all don't but I'm not saying I won't right um, and at times will have to and do. Um, Chris and I did uh, a show here in Toronto, Kinder Transport, where I first time I, I was able to use the digital projectors, the big powerful digital projectors that did motion picture as well as slides and stills. But the show called for it in a way. It, it, the only way the show would work was with that kind of reinforcement. But it was behind the set somewhere. It right. wasn't. It didn't take over. But things like digital projectors that are so yeah. mm. wildly, you know, resourceful mm. in what they mm. can do, does that, in your designer's tool basket, does that mean you offer more ideas in your designs using those tools, or do you wait for the director to put that forward? Um, well, it's a double-edged sword. First of all, if you are designing a production because you want to use that stuff, you're going to be in serious trouble. It's, it's, it's not going to work. The show, the, 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 the concept of the show itself and how it's going to be directed and how it's going to be acted dictates whether or not that equipment is going to be used or not. Right. It, it's the only way it's going to work. It's got to be organic to the production. It's got to be organic to what it is you're doing. And this technique that we're exploring is called Lantina Magica. It was first invented in 1954, I think it was, in in Belgium, in Brussels, and that's where it was first used. 1954? Yeah, well, why didn't it come over here? But well, we didn't have even regional theaters in 1954, if you recall, this country. You know, so there's just, we were just nowhere could we ever even think of it. Right. But it was real film, and they had the money, of course, the resources to be able to do it, you know, to shoot real 35 millimeter film and project it and whatever. Um, I saw it in Prague in 1978 or 79, and I thought it was fascinating. Did I want to go home and do it right away? The answer was no. 
Is this, this is also moving the moving picture on the screen behind and slits in the slits screen, in the, screen mean, yeah, the actress right. can go through. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see this wonderful thing of a train coming down the track, and the actor is running away like crazy, like this, falls on the floor as the train goes wishing over, and then you see the actor on the screen running in right. the opposite direction. Up, right. You know, it's it, it, the interaction of, of of the motion picture and the the performer. It, it's a bit gimmicky, but it's a wonderful piece of entertainment. It's it's almost uh, it's almost uh, like circus. You know, it's wonderful, right. but. The thing was, uh, Marshall McLuhan, in 1957, saw a production and wrote an article on it where he said that this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know, basically. He said, this is the new wave, this is the new world, and he, he saw the, the, the potential for it. it. Well, digital film, it is a way a culture expresses itself, That's whether right. we in the artistic community like it or not, it is expressing itself that way, and if, the, if our goal is to tell the stories of our culture, then we must use the tools that... Well, the, uh, yes, but at the same time, it has to be organic to what the heck you're doing. I mean, basically what it is. Um, there are shows where it works and there are shows where it wouldn't work. You're talking about the Cyrano de Bergerac, for example. I don't think I could use it in that. Of course I could, but I'm not going to use it in that. Does, does it actually serve? And, and uh, in that particular production we did, maybe a di not the one that would be different, it wouldn't have served. But in the stuff that we did with Kinder Transport, it served brilliantly because we, the actors had to, to mime, in a sense, being on a railway carriage in Europe and just sitting on two chairs facing each other like you and I are right now. But what was out here was the whole German countryside going by. You know. Let me take this future question a little bit further. In the future. In the future. In that so much of, I mean, my children, whatever, they're watching, they're experiencing things on YouTube. They're watching YouTube almost more than they're watching film uh, in terms of the Jajansky and the cell phone cameras. Mm -hmm. That the images in our popular imagination, they are gaining power and traction, viral images on the web, mm -hmm. YouTube images, images off cell phones, which are a very powerful expression now of our culture. To you as a visual designer who creates mm -hmm. in black boxes visual designs, as this taste or this growing sort of footprint of visual imagery that's different than anything we've ever seen before. Oh, absolutely. How does that influence what you might or might not do? Aha. Uh -huh. In attempting, let's, let's, let's just back up just a fraction and maybe I can answer the question in a different way. Because you see, I don't know how to answer your question at this point because I would need to have a production where I'm reading the play and in, in my black box see nothing but cell phones right. and computers, uh, then they would be there. But if I don't see them, I'm not putting them in the show just for the heck of it. But if you take in terms of looking at Bernard Shaw, for example, or any play, Shakespeare, for example, as well, what is it about the dialogue, what is it about what they're saying, these actors are saying, that rings true to this day? And therefore, the way why we called Shaw a surrealist, or how we, why we did uh, um, the Julius Caesar as satiricon, you know, kind of thing, was that the images that were being created by the actors as they moved through the space and what they said had to strike a note that was absolutely truthful to the audience of today. It was written truthfully for an audience of its time. Mm -hmm. We haven't changed all that much. Love is still love. Hate is still hate. Jealousy is still jealousy. Those, those emotions, human emotions, haven't changed all that much. What has changed is the environment. It, it, will, have an, it will impact greatly. There's no doubt about that. If you go back to the whole thing about uh, voice enhancement, using, using uh, voice enhancement now. One of the things, and I did a show in Edmonton, and, and it came up and said that uh, it, it was, uh, um, well, it was Fiddler on the Roof, and I didn't mind the voice enhancement there for the singers. Um, but when we talked about it, he said that, uh, that they use voice enhancement for drama. And I said, why? And they said, well, because the audience can't hear. And I said, well, why don't the actors project? And he said, no, no, the audience, the hearing of the audience is not that good anymore. 
So we know we have all the, the hearing impaired stuff in all the theaters and what have you. And some of them are using the, the, uh, the mic, the, the voice enhancements, as a way of getting to the back wall, to the person sitting in the back row. The other thing is, too, that technology is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper all the time. The day of using a, a um, um, nine five thousand dollar panty projectors to do a show is now done with one, or maybe two, five thousand dollar digitals, and it can do a heck of a lot more. Oh. I can sit in the audience with my laptop and my, my uh, video expert sitting beside <laughs> me, and we'll say, "Well, let's change the slide." You know, click, 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 click. How about this slide? Chris, say, yes, I like that one. Fine, burn it. Hand the stick over. He puts it in, and within three minutes. It would have taken me three days. Or he's sitting and you're saying, can you get me a picture of uh, well, that's a, we a 67 Chevy? He goes online in the theater, pulls a picture of a 67 she Chevy off the net, loads it, puts it, puts it in the... It's exactly what we did. We needed the front entrance to a hotel in Manchester in 1935. Quick, <laughs> up it came, there it is, fine. Burn it, hand it over, it's on the screen. Yeah. Quality? I don't like the internet stuff because it's, right. uh, the quality isn't as high, but it was just fine for what we were doing. Oh, it's amazing, Robert, what you can do. Okay. Going back to Joseph, no, we didn't mention him, of course, but Joseph Swoboda once said to me when I was in Prague, um, we were talking about where is technology going? Because he was the great so-called pinnacle of the 20th century design in the world was, was Swoboda, the, what he did to design and, and all over the place um, has changed how, des how, how people design productions. There's no doubt about that. He was a great innovator, you know, from the light curtains to the projections and the Lantina Magic, it was his, et cetera, et cetera. And what year is he, just for our audience? Well, he just, he just passed away. Right. He just passed away, but he was designing from, well, after the war when he was a very young man, he and Darianne got together and they said, well, listen, there's nothing left. The whole culture has been destroyed by the, by the Germans and, and bombed out and et cetera. And the communists have now taken over and they want to rebuild the culture. Let's not rebuild what we were. Let's rebuild where we're going. And so their whole philosophy was not, not to just recreate the Baroque theaters and what have you but to create a new theater.